Thanks, Ian. Good evening, everybody. Great to be on with you all. Uh, as Ian said, uh, maybe some of you for the first time and some some a bit more familiar familiar with us these days. Uh, I'm just going to take you through a little bit of a few things at the start. I'm going to spend about a minute on this initially, which is looking at the different registration types and the levels where they will come into play, uh, whatever, depending upon the level that the players play. So a little bit around player eligibility, and the levels uh, or the different types of registration. So you'll see here that Ian and Ollie tonight are going to take you through two main registration types. One is called RFU registration and one is called club registration. Uh, they'll also take you through some more uh, nuanced processes within those main registration types as well. And what we can see here on the left-hand side are basically where those registration uh, types apply. So if you have um, players at your club, uh, uh, teams at your club, and you want players to be eligible to be playing levels eight in the men's game, so that's counties two and above, and this does go all the way up to the premiership, um, by the way, uh, for the men's game, then RFU registration is the process that you want to keep an eye on most uh, this evening. And the same in the women's game. If you've got players who you want to be eligible to be playing levels one to four in the women's game, then uh, again, RFU registration is the type that you need to be looking at. There's two different kind of streams within RFU registration, and all of it will cover both later on. Also important to say that regardless of level, if you've got any player that is contracted to play, then they will always need to go through the RFU registration process. So in the most extreme of examples, if you have a female player playing National Challenge 3 or a male player playing Counties 5 or any other level, regardless of what, which level they play at, if they are contracted to play rugby, then they must always follow the full RFU registration process, which comes under under Regulation 14. But a little bit more in the nuts and bolts that, uh, a little bit later on. If you've got some players who um, are only uh, wanting or needing to be eligible to be playing at the levels below this black staggered line here, so that's National Challenge 2, Level 5 in the women's game, and Counties 3, Level 9 and below in the men's game. And when we say below... We do mean everything outside of that as well. So that's everything right from merit leagues, merit tables, uh, CB Cup competitions, friendlies, inner warrior series for women, anything that is below these levels, so to speak, then it will be the club registration process that, that will be the maximum those players need. So, for example, if the highest you, that a player is going to play in your uh, club is County Street, level nine, Club registration is all that your players will need. And you'll see later, um, you would have seen on a previous webinar that, uh, and we'll post links to that post webinar, that they'll be able to play for two clubs. Uh, if you want players only to be eligible above the line, then the RFU registration process will be something that the club registrar will need to take that player through uh, post club registration. But yeah, uh, a little bit, we'll do some more information on the send out for that, linking you into previous webinars, which goes into a little bit more detail. So further on to what we're going to cover tonight. So we're going to cover uh, GMS account creation and really, really important here. Not all players will need to do this. So uh, the, one of the best rules of thumb we can do on this whole rollout is to say that any player who currently holds a, a registration, an effective registration, or indeed has been registered since at least 2004 and may now no longer be registered, they will already have a GMS account by default, so they will not need to create a new one. But having said that, Ian and Oliver will be taking you through the processes to create an account anyway, because those players who have never had to register before and are new to the game will need to potentially create one. Uh, so we'll take you through players registering to play, because as you know, the principle, uh, or sorry, as many of you will know by now, maybe some find it out for the first time tonight, the, the principle of this is that the players will initially register to play with their club. We'll talk about, um, we'll show you how registrars approve those club registrations coming in. Uh, I referenced it earlier about what the processes would need to be after that for a different level of eligibility for players going through the RFU registration um, process. And we'll also touch upon expedited registration as well, which some of you will be familiar with, is, is a way of um, narrowing down the time a player can become available after having gone through an RFU registration. We'll go through transfers, loans. And for the first time on our programme so far, we're going to be having a look at cancelling and extending loans. So a little bit of a nuanced process, but hopefully, again, giving you a little bit of flavour about what's coming um, when the platform goes live. 
And then we'll also touch on, or Ian will touch on towards the end around what we're doing with resources to support the game, which, by the way, would include some further detail and communications coming on the uh, timeline towards the platform going live. So do keep an eye out for that communications, which will be coming out to clubs pretty soon. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Um, cool. So we're going to go through some of those processes that Matt just highlighted, and we're going to kick off with account creation. So this will be for any new players who do not have a GMS account, as Matt just outlined. So you'll, one thing you'll notice as we go through this is the look and feel of GMS is slightly different. So uh, the colours have changed uh, to align with so our England rugby branding. So you will notice some small tweaks uh, and improvements to the interface uh, and therefore the, the experience that you have as we go through. So um, in this case, this is just landing on the, the club dashboard. We're going to create a new account on the, the left hand screen there. It takes you up to a simple form that you just uh, simply enter your details in. And as you can see, we're entering, we're going to create an account for a player called Samwise Gamgee. So Samwise is creating his own account there, putting his details in, his phone number, address, uh, and simply pressing next. Now, this is in desktop view, um, but it has been mobile optimized, uh, these processes. Um, and we have sought feedback from, from players as well, um, which has been really useful. And we've actually been able to implement some changes um, that a player will see. Um, so you put in your credentials, your, your password, same sort of uh, passwords that you would normally do when you're creating an account for something. You check the privacy notices and what you agree to and your communication preferences. And then you will need to read and consent and agree to the waivers at the bottom of the screen there. You simply then click, uh, click next and that will create your account and you will land on your own personal dashboard. So this is really exciting. So this is this is a bit this is a change. So those of you that are used to seeing GMS all the time will see that it, this is the look and feel of this is different there's a scrolling banner at the top there that will move move through uh, but there are uh, some key places there where to register now you can go in the notifications in the middle or on the quick links on the on the far right so that's creating an account um we're going to now look at registering to play so all players um, will need to have a club registration um, and they will need to, to register to play unless they've already got an existing account where they will log in uh, and, and go from there. So we're registering uh, to play. And you'll see here that on the left hand side, um, it's already got an organization there for me. So it's already got Sales Shark. So this will show if you're already attached to that organization. Uh, or if a player is logging in uh, from a QR code that a club administrator has sent to the player. So one of the new things we're, we've got is uh, a QR code and a link that can be sent to players so they can directly click on uh, and register to play and your organisation will show there. Um, so in this case, uh, we're just going to add a club here and you simply press the, uh, the add button. Uh, which you can see on the left hand side and on the right hand side it pulls out the menu from the side and i can search for any club so i've searched for chichester uh, as a, an example here uh, and i've it will bring up all the uh, clubs and schools in chichester because i've just typed in chichester and i've selected chichester rfc uh, so that's how you would search for a player in this case we're gonna stay with sales sharks uh, and you'll see there are two key places where i can choose to, to register now with sales charts right in the middle uh, or on the far right and in mobile version this looks really clean really smooth based on the player feedback that we received um, to be able to to register to play simple form uh, that comes up once you click that button um, just asking for those relevant details so I can input my playing position front row forwards or backs I can then uh, declare any medical conditions that I have, uh, yes or no. Um, I can then put emergency contact details in and then tick the required waivers and consents there. 
And obviously my email address uh, and phone number is pre-populated there because I've already created an account. And I've got an option here at the bottom or the top right to submit. So on the mobile, when you're scrolling, you can simply just press submit at the bottom or you can press submit on the right. So I'm going to submit that now. And that will mean that my player registration is requested. And that is now pending an approval by a club registrar um, to, to allow my registration to move forward. Um, so I go back to my dashboard and you'll see on the front there, there's a, a little T-shirt mark. That's your status as a, as a player. And you can see it's amber there. And that means I'm pending. Um, so when a club registrar approves me, that will change to green. Um, and we'll show that I am uh, an active player at that club. Approving a club registration then. So this, this bit is where a, a club registrar will log in and be able to approve that club registration. And they have their own personal dashboard. So they log into their account and on their personal dashboard, you will need a club registrar will need uh, permission level of three or five with the role of adult male registrar or adult female registrar in order to ensure that they can register players at the club. You can have multiple roles um, uh, of those adult male registrars or adult female registrars. It doesn't have to be one person. You can be assigned to multiple people at the club. Um, so it's down to your club as to what that preference is. You can see on the right hand side there on my on my dashboard that I've got pending players and I can see the amount of pending senior men's registrations. I can see senior women's registrations. And in this case, I can also see age grade, but we're focusing on on the adult here. So I can uh, I can select uh, and click straight through to those registrations or I can go to the waffle in the top left hand corner of the screen there and select player management. So the good news for, for everyone here is that player registration V12 is won't exist anymore. And what you'll have is everything within the player management module within GMS. So if we select player management, you'll see we've got this new registration overview page. So it's all in one pace. You're not, you're not having to, to jump out um, into different parts of the system. It's all in one place. And I, I can see here um, the registrations across the board for the club, for uh, senior men, uh, senior women, uh, and obviously age grade uh, comes in there as well. Um, you can see that we've in our pending registrations. So this is our club registered pending registrations. Um, and you can see that there, there, are, there are three in there. Um, and if we click through, you can see Samwise Gamgee, who we've just created, is showing as pending within there. And you can either select all these registrations and approve, or you can do them individually. Um, but what you can also do is you can pull them, click on Samwise Gamgee, and I can see on the right hand side, it pulls out some relevant details that I can check. So I can just check that the individual, the player, has put in the correct details. Check some check that that's all all accurate. If I wish to, I can do the same for emergency contacts. Just check that's what they're telling me. And important to note, so it says the tenth of June here. So if I had created this account uh, today, uh, that would have been saying the twenty fourth of June. So it's basically a club registration is effective as soon as the club registrar approves that that player. So it will be effective from that date. So if you're doing it. Today, it's effective from that date. So we select Sam, Samwise, and on the top right hand corner of the screen there, it gives me the option to approve or reject the registration. So I can reject the registration and I can give a, give a reason as to why, or I can simply approve that registration. See, it disappears out of the players list within that list. And if I go back to the dashboard on the, on the left hand side of the screen, I can then see that that player has now moved to the club registered approved registrations. So if we click through onto that link, it pulls through all the, uh, the active registrations. You can see that status, that player status is now active, um, which is really uh, important. It shows your active uh, players 
that are club registered at your club. Cool. So I'm going to move on to deregistering uh, and adding a club. So at men's level nine and women's level five uh, and below, players have the additional benefit of qualifying for multi-club registration, which allows the player to hold two simultaneous uh, registrations. Um, but what I'm going to show you is an example of, we can see this player here, Johnny Rugby, um, has two clubs that they are an active player at. So you can see the T-shirt I've just shown you on the, the previous screen it says it's an active player. So he's active at Christchurch, active at uh, Whittington, and we're currently on the Christchurch Rugby Club here. Now on the right-hand side of the screen, we can see quick links. And you can see the option there highlighted in the red box to deregister from that club. So if I want, if I play at Christchurch and Whittington fairly regularly, that's great. But then suddenly I get the option to go and play for uh, Timeless Testers, my, my other club, because there's no other games on and I, I want to go and play for them. Then I simply select deregister from Christchurch and that will remove my registration from that club. Um, and the, the club will get a notification, um, but you'll see that the T-shirt there, uh, the status of that player has turned to grey. Um, so I only currently have one active registration at Whittington. If I want to add a club that I want to be added to, I simply go onto the my organisations part, add the club, search for it, type in timeless, what well, I've typed in timeless testers, and then from there, I can then register to play again. And all I need to do, everything else is pre-populated, but the medical notes uh, are not shared from club to club. So um, you just need to uh, declare that part and then check the, check the relevant details, which should be the same, and then click Submit Registration. You can then see that that player's status will then show as green with a T-shirt and an active player status. Uh, and that's just the, this real simple way of being able to deregister and, and add a club. And that, again, just to reiterate, that's only available for players who are playing men's level nine and below and women's level five and below. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. And Ollie is going to uh, take over and he's going to take you through some of the uh, next steps uh, in applying for an RFU registration. Thanks very much, Ian, and good evening, everyone. Um, some people I've, I can see on the call um, I've come across before, and some people are new. So, just a brief introduction: um, Ollie Norris, uh, Game Governance Executive, work in the Legal and Governance Department at the RFU. Um, pre in a previous life, have been a registrar at club level as well uh, for London Scottish in the Championship. And I've also been an internal RFU registrar um, dealing with Premiership, Championship, National League registrations and also PWR for the women. So um, work very closely with Bob Morrison, who I'm sure a number of you will be um, very aware of uh, in terms of registration. So Applying for RFU registration, as we kind of talked about at the start of the call, um, RFU registration will be applicable for men's teams who play at level eight and above and women's teams that play level four and above. So once a player has joined your club and has done that initial register to play and they've attained club registration status, when they're then looking to play for a team that participates, like I said, in level eight or above and level four and above, they will need to RFU register. So the RFU registration process, the onus is now on you as club registrars to kind of uplift and upgrade their registration. So on this first page here, you'll see you've got the uh, registration overview dashboard, which will be your new view when the new system goes live. And you can see there highlighted is the uh, approved registrations under the club registered players. So if we're to click into there, we'll then have a list of uh, approved club registered players. And the uh, the player that Ian's just been guiding you through, so Sam Wise is in there. And we can see if we click that the left hand column where the tick appears and then click submit RFU registration, we can then go through the process to uplift Sam Wise's registration. So 
once we click that submit RFE registration from the right hand side, this panel will pop out <clears throat> and you will see that the bottom three or four um, panels to complete are additional information on top of the club registration that's previously been submitted by the player. So if we click into the first uh, tab, you can see the player name and, and address details have all pulled through from when the player club registered. Uh, and likewise, their medical details and playing position would also pull through. So it's below that red line that we've got drawn on the screen. Those are the three additional tabs that you'll need to complete in order to RFU register a player. So if we click on the first one, player nationality and EQP application. So it's important to note at this stage that this section will differ depending on the level uh, that your club or team plays at. So the information that's being collected here is relevant to Sales Sharks, so a premiership club where we kind of require a, a larger amount of information and data to be collected. And that's all around in terms of individuals' eligibility to, to play uh, rugby at this level. So for a premiership club, they'll need to enter a country of birth from a drop-down list, the player code in terms of um, referring to the passport that a player has, and then the player category, which again relates to the passport or visa that an individual holds. But again, it's important to stress that that level of detail and information is only required from players who play at level four and above in the men's game and level one and above in the women's game uh, and or any players that may be contracted with your clubs in terms of if they're playing and earning with your club then they need to have a suitable visa that allows them to to participate in the game and and earn from it. So the EQP application section, EQP stands for England Qualified Player. So this is information that we collect for our Premiership Championship men's clubs and also Premiership women's clubs, uh, just so that we're aware of the playing base that we have available for, for England selection potentially. So again, if I click through that, there's a number of options that Premiership Championship PWR clubs can choose when, when submitting an EQP application for a player. The international eligibility section is also something that we look to gather just so that we're aware of where players are able to play uh, across the globe in terms of which nations they're eligible to represent. The, 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 the next tab, the player contract and agent declaration tab, um, is where if you've got a player under contract, you would input their contract details. So again, this the level of information that's collected uh, in this tab, again, depends on the level that your team or club participates in. And uh, so so this may vary, but again, this is an example of what we would collect for a premiership club. And you can either click amateur or contracted, depending on the player. And again, in terms of if an agent was involved in acquiring the player, you can tick agent involved or, or not involved. And so those options uh, in terms of the tick boxes will be available to you no matter what level you're at and uh, when, when RFE registering a player. So we then just click through. The, the final tab at the bottom is the player identification document. So when you're registering a player at level four and above in the men's game and level one women's, um, we require a proof of passport and visa if that's required in order to register and also um, earn whilst playing rugby. And again, those other um, attachments there around birth certificate for the player, a parent, a grandparent, that relates to a player's EQP application that I mentioned earlier in the piece. So there's a number of options there in terms of uh, being able to add attachments. I think what's important to note is if you do need to upload an attachment for your player, you can't do it at this stage in terms of in the application. What you'd need to do is in this top right hand corner, click save on the application and come back out to uh, your list of club registered players and what you would do is you'd click on the individual's id you can see the id number there hopefully in the third column along from the left if you were to click on that you would then be able to go back in and add some attachments that may be required to a player's application once you've done that you can then again go back tick the left hand column and click submit register rfu registration the right hand um, tab will pull out with all of the information you've previously submitted and then you can click submit the RFU registration. So once we've done that, the player you'll see will have moved off of this club registration list and it will they have moved into a different flow. So what we'll do is in the, the left hand corner, if we return to registration overview to see the line of approval that the player has now moved into, 
we can see back here on the dashboard um, under senior men's registration, you can see there we've now got a waiting player approval. So we, if we click into that, we can see that we've got a player that is now in there that we're looking to, that we're waiting for the player to sign off on. They need to sign off and validate their contract information if that's been submitted, agent information if that's been submitted and so on. I think some of you will have noted that at this stage in the top right hand corner, if you're looking to expedite a player, so that means you want them to play pretty much with immediate effect or within 24 hours so that they won't be, you don't have to wait for the seven day waiting period. You can again select the player in the left hand column and click expedite registration. Once you do that, that will take you through to a payment gateway, which will look something like this. So this is what we've now created. We've now got an online payment gateway, which allows you and any valid card holder to go through here and input the card details and make a payment there and then for the player. So that can be done at any stage whilst the registration is waiting uh, for approval and it's still pending, say, waiting in the seven day waiting period. Once that's done, there will then that will then be confirmed and marked on the player's registration and go through to an RFU registrar to uh, hopefully make um, the player effectively registered with immediate effect. So once that payment has been completed, we can go back to our uh, flow here in terms of identifying where the player is um, in the RFU registration process. And we can still see here that we're awaiting player approval. So our player Samwise is, st is still there. We're waiting for him to sign off on the, the RFU registration form that we've submitted. So if we now go to what your players will see from a player perspective, we've logged into Samwise's account here. And you'll notice down in the bottom right hand corner, because we've submitted an RFU registration for him saying that he's contracted and an agent's been used, that he's got a contract approval notification. So he can click on this notification and it will again pull open the RFU registration that you as a club registrar have submitted. And he can, or the player can review the details that have been submitted. You'll notice here that things are greyed out, so that there's not a, a danger or risk of a player being able to uh, amend anything at this stage, um, which may be important information. But they can review all of this and make sure they're happy before clicking approve. If they're not happy, they of course have the option to click reject and they can reject. And when rejecting, they can send back a note to you as a club registrar saying why they're rejecting. And that may be a case of some details were incorrect or, or they were unsure on something. So in this case, the player is happy with the information that's been submitted. So they'll click approve. And you'll see back on Samwise's main dashboard that his notifications are now cleared and uh, his work is done really, so to speak. So if we now go into my account, actually, so as an RFU registrar, so that uh, you as the club registrar have submitted the RFU registration it's gone through to the player. They've signed off on the piece they needed to sign off on approve once verifying the information. So now I'll go to my own notifications tab and I can see that I've got a regi some registrations there outstanding to approve. So I can see specifically for sale sharks. I know I've got two at those levels that I need to look at and review. And if I click onto that, I can see in here we've got Samwise's RFU registration there waiting for me to review. So I guess a little bit of a behind the scenes look, you'll see that it's very similar to what you as a club and as uh, and the player will see in terms of reviewing this information, but we'll review this player nationality information, contract and Asian information, and review any attached documents that may be required in order to prove the player's eligibility. So we'll do that and uh, we'll then get to this stage where we've got the registration details and we can do our thing in terms of when the player is eligible, either with immediate effect if they're not a currently registered player, or we'll set the waiting period as seven days for when the player can become eligible. So I can set the effective date to an appropriate date. If, like I mentioned earlier, it's a premiership or championship player and they've submitted uh, England qualified player documentation, I can update their status on here. And once I'm happy with that, I can click approve. And I'll see here that the player has moved out of my notifications tab for RFU registration and now we'll just hop back to what you'll see then as a club registrar you'll see that in the RFU 
uh, senior men's registration column on the left hand side there we've got pending registrations now so we can see here that's highlighted if we're to click in there you'll see that we've got Samwise there uh, ready and waiting pending so you can see when the valid from date for that individual uh, is and again if um, you're looking to make that individual available with immediate effect you can go into that left hand column and tick oh sorry just skip forward there tick the furthest left hand column and if you're looking to expedite it will give you that option to expedite again and you can look to um, expedite the individual to make them available with immediate effect so hopefully that was was clear i'm on, on the rfu registrations front if i'm speaking too quickly feel free to put that in the q a chat as well and just ask me to slow down and i'll, I'll do that for you so now we're going to go on to transfers so Transfers is a slightly newer term or, or phrase that we've kind of used. And a transfer basically means when you're looking to register a player that is already registered at a current at a club currently. So what we've seen when we've gone from start to finish here is we've seen an account creation for a player who's never registered to play or had a GMS account. So they've created an account and they've then club registered. And then in order to make them eligible for level eight and above men's or um, level four and above women's we've then rfu registered them if you're looking to register a player who you know has been playing uh, rugby at a, a local rival club or maybe they've moved to your area and they've been playing in a different region of the country rather than them going through that process the way you'll initiate a player joining your club is via a transfer so I think this probably relates to the predominant um, number of players that we see in terms of registering with clubs. They, they tend to have played in the game previously and, and have been registered somewhere somewhere else. So if we're now a new club here, Dudley Kings Winford, and we go in, we've logged into GMS, and we go to the top left-hand corner to the nine um, uh, icon um, bar, we can see player management in there. So if we click on player management, it will take us into our registration overview dashboard. So we can see here again the left-hand column around registrations um, for senior men, We've got senior women down the middle, and then age grade on the far right. So in this case, like I said, we're looking to transfer a player. So you can see on the left-hand column, we, uh, sorry, the left-hand um, bar, we've got a transfers tab. So you can click into the transfers tab. And that will take you to here. So what we can you can see in the top right hand corner is we've got request a transfer. So this basically means you're looking to bring in a player that is currently registered with another club. You want to initiate their transfer from another club. So you'll click request transfer and you'll be asked to input their first name, uh, surname and their date of birth. So if we input that for Samwise, which is the player that we just RSU registered previously, we can search for the player and we can see that it's returning Samwise who we registered with Sale Sharks. So if we click on Samwise, we've then initiated the transfer for that player. So you can see that we've initiated a transfer and the status of that transfer is currently pending. So what happens then is Sale Sharks, as the player's current club, will be notified. So if I'm logged in as a Sale Sharks registrar, or if you're logged in as a club registrar, say, and, and uh, another club has requested one of your players, you'll see in this bottom right-hand corner again for notifications, you've got a notifications tab, and you can see that there has been a transfer for one player, one individual. So if you click on that transfers tab, you'll again be brought through to here, and you'll see that there's been a transfer request from Dudley Kings Winford for Samwise. What you can do is you can click on that transfer request to see the details. And once you've clicked on it, or again, show you a little bit more detail on the right hand side in terms of where the player's uh, looking to join and obviously where they're, where they're coming from, which is you as the, as the current club. So you can approve or reject that transfer. And obviously the reasons for rejecting that transfer is in accordance with RFU regulation 14.44. Um, otherwise, we can look to approve that transfer. So if you click the approve button, that will be fab. And that means that the notification then disappears from the current club's notifications. And you'll see uh, in the right 
at bottom right hand corner there on your home page that that notifications pane has has updated and refreshed so now as dudley kings winford we're the applicant club we're looking to transfer the player in so we go back into our um, account as the applicant club and again we click in the player management tab in the top left hand corner and we're back to our dashboard now which is hopefully coming becoming nice and familiar and what we can do or do to check that a transfer has gone through we can check specifically in the transfer tab on the left hand side there and we can see once we click in that tab that we have now got Samwise who has transferred into our club uh, and he's transferred in with immediate effect and that is because when you transfer in you transfer in automatically or immediately as club registered so that means you're able to transfer in immediately and play at level nine and below in the men's game and level five and below in the women's game so if we are looking to have Samwise play at a level higher than that for one of our teams that maybe plays in a regional competition or in the national leagues we can again go through the RFU registration process we can click on that column on the left hand side and and look to submit an RFU registration for Samwise. So again, hopefully this is will be a little bit familiar now. We get the RFU registration details which will appear from the right and we know that we're going to need to update or input the information that's asked of us predominantly in those bottom three tabs so around player nationality, EQP application and the player and agent uh, contract and declaration. So we can again here input the player nationality information that's required or asked of us. Similarly, we can put in the contract information if the player is contracted or just confirm that they're amateur and likewise just confirm whether an agent was involved or not when acquiring a player or having a player join our club. Again, we can check or have a think if we need to ensure that the player has got any identification documents attached to their um, account before submitting an RFU registration if they're missing some identification documents we can quickly save what we've done and click on the individual RFU ID and add the missing attachment for them but if we're generally happy we can look to oh sorry we can look to submit uh, an RFU registration for this player so Dudley Kings Winford's going to do that and now we'll see that we're back with Samwise the player's uh, GMS page and we can see that they've got a new notification and that is a contract approval in relation to their RFU registration with their new club Dudley Kings Winford so if they click on their notification they will get this uh, their RFU registration form appear from the right and they'll have the ability to just check through all of that information that again is greyed out that they're unable to edit at this stage but they can just check through that they're happy that their club registrar has input all of the correct information and they're happy to approve their RFU registration. So once they've done that, you're back with me uh, as from the RFU registration or a registrar's perspective. I'll see that I've got another notification down here, an updated notification for another RFU registration. So I would click in there, and again, I can see that I've got an RFU registration for Samwise, this time uh, registering with Dudley Kings Wimford. So I can click on that RFU registration, my turn to review the details and make sure we're comfortable with the information that's been submitted and that the player is eligible to RFU register and play at this level. And once I've done that, I can just go in there and confirm the registration details in terms of the player's effective date. So when they'll be active and, and available to play for the new club and mark up any other relevant information around uh, EQP status or if they're an academy player etc so if I'm happy which I think I am I'll click approve and that player will then enter the RFU registration approval flow for you again as club registrars so he Samwise has dropped off of my notification tab and if we log back into Dudley Kings Winford we can again go to the top left hand corner to access player management we go into player management and it takes us back to our registration overview dashboard I can click into the transfers tab and I can again see that Samwise is there RFU registered and showing as active following RFU approval 
I think the important thing to note here as well, if I just go back one slide, is if you're looking as well to see a player that may have been approved RFU registered, you can, if I use my mouse here, just come to approved RFU, approved registrations under the RFU section, click in there and be able to find Samwise in there as well. So, yeah, like we've seen in the transfers town, we could see that Samwise is RFU registered and active and available for me. So just taking a little pause there, hopefully that that was all good. Uh, Ian and Matt, just give me a little shout if you've got any questions that you want to go over. Yeah, it's good for that. Good for now, Ollie. Yeah, okay. Cool. Right, if everyone's happy, sorry, I feel like a whistle stop tour through everything here, but hopefully it's all helpful for everyone. Happy to answer some questions after this. Um, so looking at loans now and in terms of how you as a club registrar would loan a player, so get a player in on loan from another club. So if we go back here, we are now uh, an, another club, Northern FC, and I've logged in as a club registrar to my GMS account. I'm looking to loan a player. So I'm going to go to that top left-hand corner and go into our new player management module. I'll click on that, and that will bring me to the registration overview dashboard. You'll see there on the left-hand side, we've got two new tabs. We've got loaned in and we've got loaned out. So obviously we're looking to loan a player in. So if we click loaned in, we'll see we've currently got no players in on loan and haven't previously. So what we're going to do is look to request a new loan. So top right-hand corner, a bit like what we did with transfers when we did a request to transfer here in the loan tab, we're going to request a new loan. So click on request new loan and we get our search function again. So we input an individual's first name, last name, and date of birth, and click search. So I can see here, I'm looking for Frodo Baggins, and I can see that they're registered with Harlequin. So uh, that's the player that's uh, returned in my search. I'm gonna click on Frodo Baggins, and it's then gonna ask me for some details around the loan that we're looking to, to have for this player from Harlequins. So what you can do is you can input the valid from date on the loan in terms of when the player is going to be loaned into you and you can set how long you want them loaned with you until. So whether that's one week, two weeks or a number of months, we can input the dates there for when we want the player. So I'll input those and then what I'll do in the top right hand corner is click submit to submit the loan. And now in our loaned in uh, tab, we'll see Frodo Baggins and we can see the status of his loan is awaiting club approval. So we know that that is now currently with Harlequins for their review. So if I'm now logged in as Harlequins, as Harlequins uh, registrar, I'm logged in and I can see in this bottom right hand corner, I've got some notifications that I need to be aware of. So I can see there that we've got a loan request, uh, a loan approval to do. Uh, for a club at between level five to eight on the men's side of the game. So if I click into that, I can see here we've got a loan request for Frodo Baggins. If I click on that loan request, it will then give me the details around when the loan is going to be valid from until. And I can look to, uh, if I'm happy with the details there, I can approve. If I'm not happy, then I can reject and add a rejection note. But I think in this scenario where we're generally happy, happy for the player to go out on loan, and get some game time. So we're going to look to approve that uh, loan. So click to approve, uh, and now that means the applicant club have submitted their loan request. The player's current club has approved it, and so now it comes to me as an RFU registrar to review and approve as well. So in my notifications tab in the bottom right-hand corner here, I can see a loan approval for my review. So if I click on that, I can see Frodo Baggins loan request. I can look to click on that loan request. And again, I can see the details there of the loan um, in terms of the, the dates when the player will uh, go on loan and when they'll be due to be recalled. And I can look to amend that if, if required. Um, if not, I can just review and approve the loan. So now we're back with Northern, who is the club that uh, requested the loan. So if I I'm logged in now as the applicant club. I can go back into player management and in loaned in, I can see there that the player is pending. So they're pending in terms of we requested the loan to start on the 17th of June, but it's now been approved by all parties. So the loan will commence as and when I've requested it. If we're looking to have that player 
uh, available with immediate effect. What I can actually do is, same with an RFU registration in terms of expedite it, I can look to expedite that loan request. So I click on the left-hand column where the red tick comes up. I get that option to expedite the loan. So I can either expedite the loan or I can request a loan extension. Expediting the loan will just take you through to the payment gateway that you've seen before with the RFU registration process. And requesting an extension will just open up the initial loan form and it will just allow you to uh, request a new date in terms of the loaned uh, final final date. So I think this next uh, slide will go into that in a little bit more detail around extending a loan. So here you can see I can click on the right hand side and just select request an extension. Like I said, this loan form will reappear and I can go to the valid two box and input a new date in terms of when we want to loan the player to. So I can update that information and then just click submit again and that will go through to the RFU for approval. In terms of cancelling a loan, if you've got a player out on loan and you're looking to cancel a loan, so recall a player, what you can do as a club registrar is you can go to your uh, loaned in tab and you can review the details of the player. And what you'll need to do as you do currently is you'll need to email your RFU registrar with the details of the player that you want to recall and when you want to recall them from. So um, if you are one of the clubs that I've worked with previously, you'd email me and say, please, can we recall the player um, X with immediate effects and make sure to uh, CC in the club that uh, the player is currently with. And then in the back end of GMS, I'm able to go in here and cancel the loan for you with immediate effect or extend or cancel to as and when there is a kind of valid and required date um, in terms of what's been agreed between the clubs. So then you'll see once I've cancelled the loan or selected loan cancelled status, you as the club will see that the loan has been cancelled and the player has been recalled to their parent club. So that was it from me. Hopefully that was helpful and you guys have taken um, plenty from that. And I think I will hand back over to Ian now. Yeah, Ollie, if you just uh, keep your screen up, that would be great. Yeah, sure. Um, thank you. Um, so resources to, to support you guys in the, in the game. Lots of uh, good questions coming in the chat as to whether there is any uh, guides, but I'll come to that in, in a second. Um, so you have already seen that there's been lots of communications out to uh, administrators at clubs, and this will continue over the coming weeks as we build towards um, the platform going live. So look out for some communications coming uh, soon. Um, you will, so that will continue. Um, you will also see, if you haven't already, uh, to go on to Community Rugby Help. So this is a place where you can get information on everything in the community game. Um, so check that out if you haven't. There is a adult player registration uh, announcement on there uh, and if you click that tile you'll be able to see all the information around adult player registration that you need to to see at this point in time and uh, that's everything from upcoming webinars to recording of webinars that we've done uh, on adult player registration this month um, so everything you need the other main point that is there is you can submit a help request. So if you're struggling with a, a technical GMS query or you have a question around adult player registration where you're not sure of a process or want some clarity, then you can submit a help request uh, via Community Rugby Help and one of the team will pick that up and um, be able to feed back to you. So really useful place to go if you haven't seen it already. Um, the other useful place to go is the Platform for Rugby YouTube channel. Uh, it's good if you subscribe because you'll get uh, notified when new videos go, go live. So worth checking that out. There is an adult player registration playlist 
There are already some videos that are key videos in there uh, for you at this point in time uh, with some webinars. Now, with our webinars, especially the player registration processes ones, we are time stamping the different processes that we're going through. So if you just want to check on one part that we've gone through tonight or in a previous webinar, if you look in the, the description of the video, it will have a timestamp that you can just click on and it'll take you direct to that point in time. So saving you as a volunteer time to, to get what you need. Um, we also currently have a GMS support trainer session, just currently focused around uh, data at the moment and supporting clubs to understand um, what they need to do to help players uh, verify email addresses. We've de delivered a few of those sessions. Um, but what will be coming uh, when we go live is an adult player registration session for clubs. If you want a session with a trainer, depending on the level of you of club, as you'll now understand from us taking you through that club registration and RFU registration, um, there will be a session to support you around those processes as well coming. Um, you'll see on there we've had some uh, local delivery team contact. You may have had some of the local RFU staff team contacting you, just uh, supporting you and signposting, helping you out where to find information around adult player registration. And I've had a key focus over the last few weeks um, and last few months around uh, the email verification and ensuring that existing players within GMS know they have a, an account their email address is up to date and that player can then log in. So that's what the local delivery team uh, are supporting. Uh, and you, you will see more of that in the future. Um, we've also had ongoing user feedback and, and testing. And some of you are on here tonight are a part of our platform for rugby user groups that have been shared different processes as we uh, we build this uh, and get feedback which has been brilliant and, and that's an ongoing piece those user groups will be there as we adopt our user-centric approach and keep that two-way engagement with the game so that's been really nice to be able to to do that uh for this big uh big change um and then our webinar program so we're coming to the end of a, a month-long uh, webinar program uh, for adult player registration. So um, some of you have asked questions around whether this webinar will be uh, will be able to be accessed. Uh, what 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 is tomorrow? So tomorrow is this same webinar, but at lunchtime. Um, so if you do want to watch again, you're more than welcome. But if you have any other people in your clubs that you want to share that with, then please do so. So uh, lunchtime session tomorrow. And there will be some future support sessions coming as we build through July, August and September uh, based around the, the level of game uh, that you are you are playing, that your club's at um, and future communications on these uh, will be distributed soon so um, do look out for those extra support sessions um, and we will be running some some of the GMS technical drop-in sessions as well just for those quick fire 30 minute questions uh, sessions where we just answer uh, a number of questions with the the service desk team live so um, always useful to, to look out for them as well thanks Ollie just uh, if you move the screen on, Ollie, that'd be great. So just one thing to, to remember for you guys um, is that existing players, and I've said this once tonight already, but existing players uh, will have a GMS account. Um, they need to know that they've got a GMS account. So someone from the club needs to tell them that um, and that they need to have uh, an email address that is up to date uh, and that player needs to be able to log in uh, to their GMS account and they can verify their, their email address whilst they're in there. But by logging logging in to their GMS account, they will be able to register to play from when we go live with adult player registration. So important that they know they've got, got an account and also that they can log into it. Um, if a player is struggling or, or they may already have an existing email address, then it's really um, key that uh, a ticket is submitted to Community Rugby Help because what may have uh, happened in the past is a player doesn't realise they've already got an existing account because a club registrar has created one for them. Um, and then that player may have gone on to a, a coaching course maybe where their coaching courses are assigned to another record. So they may have created another record uh, which means that they may not be able to have that uh, unique email address. So important that 
um, that a ticket is submitted to community will be helped to resolve that uh, and a team will, will take care of that. Thank you. Um, we've got four minutes uh, remaining. Um, so do keep the questions coming in the chat. We will try and get through uh, as many as we can. Um, Matt, I don't know if there's any common ones that you just want to bring live now with four minutes to go. Um, if there's any common ones that you've seen that you just want to cover off. Yeah, there's, there's a lot here. It's the, it's the highest engagement we've definitely had. So thank you for that. Definitely keep us on our toes and fingers tonight for sure. Um, we're probably not going to get through all of them, but we'll definitely make sure that they're incorporated into future communications. A couple of key ones to, to, to pull out, Ian. Um, people talking about the eligibility and the levels. So if I've got a player at this level and a player at that level, what does that mean? So if you can cast your mind back to the beginning of the webinar, if we're talking about the club registration type, and if you've got players that the highest level of eligibility you want them to play in the men's game, for example, would, would be level nine, counties three, and in the women's game, it would be national challenge two, level five. They can register and play for a second club, so they can have two registrations at any one time with um, RFU League clubs, and I'll go on to talk about other types of clubs in a second. Those um, registrations can change almost instantly and frequently, so the players can self-transfer themselves at that level. So I'll give you an example of um, it's the level of rugby I played most of my uh, rugby time, that's for sure. So I'm very aware of how players can become available late in the day at those levels. Uh, and that's why the registration type at those levels is pretty much instant. And whilst there's also a retrospective registration option. You know, if you do go back and have a look in the uh, chat function, I put a link into a previous webinar on that from around about a month ago. And Ian, if you could just post that back in again, it's the one that we did near the end of April. There's a lot more detail in that there. But retrospective option will be player becomes available really late in the day. And that could be a player who's already got two registrations or just hadn't registered in time for the season for whatever reason and becomes available middle of October. Then they can take to the field, do their activate warm up, make sure they're obviously physically ready to play rugby. And then they can retrospectively register after the game has finished and by 12 noon each Tuesday on a loop. So example might be NC2 playing the women's game becomes available just before kickoff uh, on the Sunday, take to the field, let's get the game sorted out. And then that player could then retrospectively register by 12 noon on the Tuesday. And where match cards are played uh, in those games, then they will be able to retrospectively add that player uh, onto the match card, providing that they are registered by that 12 noon cutoff on the Tuesday. A couple of other ones, Ian, conscious of time. We've got a few questions tonight on universities and services. So just to be clear that universities and services, providing they're not playing in RFU leagues, so an easy one to pull out there would be like Loughborough students uh, in their men's level three or four. I can't remember what it is at the minute. Then... Um, as long as they're playing books, rugby, non-RFE rugby, so they're playing loads of intramural sides, intercollegiate teams, wherever it might be. Durham University down the road for me, they could play to register for men's second team books, uh, Collingwood College, the Agrix, the Law Society. They can do all of those, no problem, multiple times, and that will not impact upon their RFU league club registration. So, for example, they could still play for Durham City, RFC next door. That's not a problem. If they were then to play for Durham University's RFU League team, which they have one now in Counties 2, Level 8, that would then be uh, impacting upon things and they would not therefore be able to go and register for another club. But if we're talking about universities and services clubs uh, per se on their own, they can register for as many of those as they like, providing they're not playing in RFU leagues. Um, there's a few more which we'll try and get through, Ian, but there's, there's, there's loads tonight, which is great, but... We've all we've got the transcripts, obviously, so we'll make sure that where the key ones are coming through, we'll make sure they're covered in, in future comms that go out to the game, as you said. Excellent. Thanks, Matt. And thanks for everyone for giving up time to join and understand this. We appreciate that. Um, look out for uh, future webinars and future comms uh, coming soon. Um, and if you do want to attend again tomorrow at lunchtime, if you've got a bit of time, you're more than welcome to same session will be uh, delivered tomorrow, uh, 12.30. So check that out. Um, check out Community Rugby Help if you are stuck or unsure on anything. The team are there to support. You can submit a help request. But thank you so much for your time uh, and look out for this recording on Platform for Rugby YouTube channel. Thanks very much. <laughs>